When a fellow gym fanatic suggested using steroids, she went for it, but soon developed an addiction to daily doses of the steroid Trenbolone. What's up guys, Derek, moreplatesmoreleads.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about female bodybuilder steroids gave me a penis. Yes, this is Candace Armstrong and she says, Steroids turned her into a man, which, you know, expectedly, anabolic androgenic steroids carry some masculinizing burden with them. Even the most benign slash selective, like they're not benign at all, but most tissue selective of all, even things like Anavar that are seen as weak girl steroids, will still viralize the fuck out of you if taken for too long and or at too high of a dosage. As well as given the background context on some of your, uh, you know, baseline hormone levels and whatnot. So anyways, female gym junkie has revealed how she now looks like a man after developing a steroid addiction which mutated her body. Pretty fucking bold words here. Candace Armstrong, who used to be a pretty blonde, has been left with stubble, broad shoulders, and a one-inch penis after using the drug in a desperate attempt to improve her shape. The former London barmaid said her nightmare began two years ago when she joined a gym to improve her physique. Armstrong, who suffers from body dysmorphia, revealed she would work out for three hours a day. It was convinced her upper body was too slender. But despite people telling her she was developing great biceps, it wasn't enough. When a fellow gym fanatic suggested using steroids, she went for it, but soon developed an addiction to daily doses of the steroid Trenbolone. Armstrong told British tabloid The Sunday People she only started using the drug because she hated her body, but now things were a thousand times worse. In fact, the drug altered her body so much that her clitoris grew into a one-inch penis. She developed facial hair, acne, and even began walking like a man. The transition was so extreme she now dresses in men's clothes so she isn't mistaken for a man in drag and now avoids women's toilets. Now I look like a man and I hate it. Even my own mother has told me I'm not pretty anymore she said i don't want to become a man i just want to be normal i stopped having any sort of sex drive for men i tried having sex with a girl but that didn't do anything for me either so it's not like it has turned me lesbian armstrong said she thought the drug would make her training more effective oh by the way this is what armstrong used to look like in a photo dated 2008 um armstrong said she thought the drug would make her training more effective but has now developed an addiction which has changed her body to such an extent even her gp asked if she was undergoing a sex change i used to get a lot of attention from men now very few people find me attractive but i can't say i miss sex i have no sex drive and i'm more insecure than ever she said she added she now was now trying to beat her addiction but still works out for at least three hours a day armstrong said she grew a one inch penis after taking steroids um so this article has uh, circulated the internet you know to many different sites and it has kind of like been resurfaced in new publications you know every few years it's kind of brought up again um and you know it's kind of an old story but it's kind of an interesting and fucking huge headline you know the most clickbait article ever even though it's not really clickbait like if this actually happened which presumably like if you go look through some of the historical articles and shit like she's pretty outspoken about what happened she takes pictures with like vi with actual you know syringes and shit she talks to huffington post she talks to like a lot of different like big news outlets and it seems to be um, a credible story that you can see kind of, you know, across the internet and whatnot. So here's a before pic here. UK female body, female bodybuilder steroid use made her grow penis facial hair, Orlando Sentinel. And this is the after with the, uh, Jersey Shore tan going. Um, get hench says Candace. Um, here's me holding, is that my fucking trend I'm holding for the Huff Post? Female bodybuilder Candace Armstrong steroid habit made her grow a penis and facial hair. Yeah, so she's obviously pretty outspoken about it. Says the same kind of, you know, bold headline to every single news outlet, it seems. This is her in a dress and jeans and boots, hitting a front double buy on you. Looking fucking cranked, bro. So again, if you're injecting Trenbolone daily, and she has no sex drive, by the way, what would be the cause of that? Well, if you're using a very, very potently suppressive anabolic energetic steroid like a 19 nor you can imagine her her actual endogenous, you know, steroidogenesis cascades producing naturally derived estrogen, notably progesterone, testosterone are all going to be fucked. Like she's going to have natural production in the gutter of these hormones. And keep in mind, trenbolone is not a substrate for aromatase. So is it going to be, or a potent substrate for aromatase, is it going to be producing enough estrogen to provide 
that estrogen backbone and the accompanying libido, because again, estrogen is absolutely critical for libido. So if you use any kind of like DHC derivative on its own without a test base or some sort of estrogen backbone, you know, eventually your sex drive is going to fucking plummet. So presumably this is what happened to her. I imagine she has a shit ton of androgenic signaling from the trend as evidenced by these, you know, before and after pictures. This is what she looked like before again. And then this is what she looks like after. Um, not shy about getting on fucking camera, dude. Like these are, uh, some pole dancing shots, taking some, uh, it's a whole fucking photo shoot going on here. Hitting flexes, hitting most musculars, holding her fucking trend. Insane, bro. So anyway, yeah, like that explains the libido thing partially in my opinion. Also just being like fucking depressed about things I imagine is going to have a pretty significant impact on it in general. But the fuck, I just have a thumbnail of like a goddamn geodude ass sitting here. But all right. Anyways, like you see, like viralization is very, very difficult to reverse. This is something, this is why you have to be so fucking careful if you're a girl exploring these kinds of compounds in general, bodybuilding, fitness, anything related to pushing things to super physiological levels or even trying to get to your genetic, you know, height, your genetic peak in a faster way. You have to approach it very fucking carefully. Also, we can see down here, Notable is uh, another case of viralization. This is, uh, you know, pretty famous before and after of, is it Denise Raptowski or something? I forget what it is. Let me just do a Google search here. And it was, uh, yeah, wow. Renice, Denise Rutkowski uh, has a pretty famous before and after um, that has been featured, featured on Nick Strength and Power as well as, you know, a few other channels. But... This is, uh, let's see, I believe she was arrested at some point. And obviously if you're just randomly arrested, you're not gonna have time to prepare, you know, your makeup and all that shit, you know, shave your face. So when she shows up with her mug shot, it's just totally, you know, you still have remnant, you know, androgenicity, masculinization. Like again, even when I crushed my DHC to literally zero with dutasteride, I still grew my facial hair just the same. It made pretty much no notice, noticeable difference whatsoever on any area of my body except for my back. So that's very notable for these girls who are exposing themselves to these hormones for long spans of time. Ultimately, a lot of this shit may be irreversible. Some of these structural changes, some of the morphological changes, some of the, the voice deepening, a lot of that shit you can't really, you know, just reverse simply by going to, you know, going on anti-androgens and exogenous estrogen, trying to replicate a, you know, female hormone profile again. Like, yeah, you might be able to strip yourself of the muscle and the fucking bone density to some extent, but some of these structural changes like to the face, to the fucking, the actual hair follicles, like you're, you might not be able to get rid of that. You probably won't be able to get rid of that. So this is why it's so fucking critical that you approach this stuff extremely conservatively and ideally not at all if you're a girl. These individuals, like for example, Denise, she was competing in you know, major shows and she obviously pushed the envelope to develop her physique to where it was at. Could she have achieved this physique without exogenous anabolics? Probably fucking not, to be honest. But again, is there a way she could have approached it safer or in a better way? You know, perhaps there wasn't a lot of knowledge, you know, back then or the most, you know, elaborate insights into pharmacology, you know, tissue selective anabolics and whatnot. And for Candace Armstrong, she obviously, you know, did not heed much of the, you know, advice or research because she was exposing herself to daily administrations of Tremblone, which again is more tissue selective technically on paper than testosterone, but it's still going to androgenize, masculinize the fuck out of you. And this kind of stuff needs to be approached far more conservatively than what even a lot of bikini competitors are doing now. I spit all over my fucking table, but it's fine. So again, <laughs> if you're looking for like, like safe, you know, anabolics as a girl, like nothing safe, but ultimately if you're going to be exploring, you know, performance enhancement and whatnot, obviously, you know, maxing out diet, maxing out training, maximizing sleep hygiene, maximizing recovery, etc. Like all that shit should be maxed out beforehand that goes without saying you should still approach pharmacology with the same kind of approach that men should take but even more conservatively you should understand this stuff thoroughly and understanding how the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis works in females is even more complicated than it is in the hpga in men like most people hormone clinics especially don't barely understand fucking the feedback loop and you know steroidogenesis cascades of men 
let alone women. So when women approach this shit and shut themselves down, they take birth control, they do this, they do that. No one, a lot of people have no idea what the fuck's going on. A lot of these prep coaches are throwing girls on cocktails of just absolutely insane regiments. Like we saw this, uh, you know, sort of, you know, a bird's eye view of it on the, uh, the death cycle video, you know, the uh, video Leo did that I reacted to with some of the, you know, crazy fucking death inducing protocols that are being used in females nowadays um, to get them stage ready and fucking dice to the socks. Um, less of a highlight was given to the androgens used by these females. However, you do see severely viralized individuals, even in the fucking, even in bikini nowadays, it's fucking crazy. Now, do you need these kind of compounds to be competing at a high level in bikini? Like, do you need fucking trend? No, you don't. Do you need to be <laughs> pushing anabolics at all? Like, to be honest, I guess some of this is going to boil down to genetics, genetic response and shit, but ultimately... What I see the most common outcome for females is not exploring the safer, smarter, non-viralizing agents that would otherwise be far more useful to kind of max out before you even touch a thing like a SARM or an anabolic androgenic steroid or anything of this nature that interacts with the androgen receptor, to be honest. Any androgen receptor agonist should be the last fucking thing a female uses. If you want to get some more detailed insight onto what makes sense in my opinion, you can check out the SARMS Girl Returns video. This was a 18 year old girl on TikTok taking RAD140 to grow muscle tissue. So obviously a pretty like newbie lifter um, is trying to get a physique that is representative of you know the fitness chicks, I don't know, bikini models, whatever it is, because uh, she's in pretty good shape. You know, it's not like she was you know, like fucking fat or something or, you know, way out of shape or not, you know, like pretty solid physique at baseline, to be honest. But she still did not feel it was adequate and felt pressure to take exogenous anabolics in order to push the muscle protein synthesis vector to try and get to where, you know, presumably she sees like physique she idolizes and she thought SARMs were the way to go. But so many things were overlooked in that, you know, transition to SARMs. Like that was the first go-to option when there's so many other things that make sense to look at first. And I evaluate them in this video specifically. And again, it would be great if I could have titled the video just as like, you know, what females should do before looking at steroids like, or something like that. But it wouldn't have got the views it did. And, you know, I'm glad that it popped off the way it did because that was some highly beneficial information. It was actually the first time I touched on some research that I felt um, I've been keeping for a fucking while and I wanted to find like the most like viral way I could present it. And that was discussing the DHEA concurrently with, um, combined oral contraceptives. Cause a lot of girls are using combined oral contraceptives and shutting down their free test levels as well as, you know, their total test to a significant extent as well without understanding or even realizing it. And they wonder why they're getting subpar outcomes and they end up pushing exogenous fucking SARMs or anabolic androgenic steroids or whatever it is to try and, you know, hopping on that Anavar train because that's the only way you can fucking, you know, get a good physique when in reality, they're like shutting themselves down from their own natural hormones that otherwise could have potentially, you know, pushed the muscle growth vector, you know, a decent amount harder, you know? Having your free test shut down by like 50, 60, 70%, is your physique going to have the same performance outcomes, muscle building outcomes, fat loss outcomes? Fuck no, obviously not. <laughs> so that is where I discuss, you know, some of the novel interventions I think have the most sense and make uh, just a logical step-by-step -step progression through things that interact with um, satellite cell proliferation, interact with um, like, mTOR phosphorylation, interact with anti-catabolic actions in the body, things that could otherwise lead to a greater level of protein accretion cumulatively without having significant agonism of the androgen receptor through something that could otherwise be viralizing. So if you're gonna be leaning towards a anavar or something, like is that the first thing you should be using necessarily and then pushing it to, you know, to 10, 15, 20 milligrams even for months on end to achieve your you know, muscle building goals as a female there's so many other things you can look to before you push that vector. And then by the time you get to the Anavar or the SARMs or the whatever, you probably maximize so many of these other things that are non-androgenic entirely that you might need like a tiny fucking splash of the stuff over here that's actually potentially going to viralize you permanently to a point that it's so much more benign and innocuous that it's like, you know, relatively unnoticeable and you can much more easily manage your systemic burden 
and you know, viralizing outcomes. And hopefully you don't need this shit at all. Because again, most girls that are not trying to compete on a bodybuilding stage or like a fucking figure stage or something will not need things like Anivar, things like fucking Nandrolone, things like SARMs even. A lot of that muscle building, fat loss, you know, goal physique outcomes that females want, they're not looking to build huge fucking massive physiques. They're looking for tight toned, like, you know, fit looking bodies with some muscle mass, some functional muscle mass, but they want to look like tight toned, you know, that kind of physique can be achieved via natural shit most of the time. Um, decent genetics, obviously, but also, you know, other things that can be leaned on, other vectors have absolutely nothing to do with viralizing outcomes. And I see, you know, the first go-to thing being like 10 milligrams of Anivar off the bat, or, you know, jumping to RAD140 or some shit, when it just does not need to be, you know? Even if something is tissue selective or like relatively well tolerated, it's all cumulative. And eventually this shit creeps up on you. Like when you're looking in the mirror every single day, when you're listening to yourself talk every single day, you don't notice when you're starting to have voice changes. You don't really notice when some of this shit is happening until one day you look down and it's like, oh shit, you know, I've noticed my fucking clit is hypersensitive now. Or somebody says to you on a phone call, like, huh, like I didn't even recognize your voice for a second or shit like that. And before you know it, you've had like some permanent alterations and it fucking is scary. A lot of girls are doing this shit to themselves and don't realize that there are different ways to address muscle growth that do not just have to do with fucking Anivar or, you know, fucking SARMs or whatever. Cause again, SARMs are not going to be totally benign either from an androgenicity context. So again, check out this video if you want to see my deep dive into, you know, the implications of oral contraceptives on your testosterone levels that you naturally produce that you would otherwise rely on for muscle building. Um, other kind of adjunct things that can be useful through avenues and receptor interactions that have absolutely nothing to do with viralizing outcomes. I highly recommend you do that as a female. And if you're, you know, a guy who is, you know, advising your girl on, you know, how to gain muscle because she's, you know, interested in it because you're in the gym and she wants, you know, to tag along or is, you know, planning on competing or whatever, have her look at shit like this, you know? Like I talk about some way more well tolerated from a viralizing aspect strategies that I think should be explored thoroughly before looking at the Anivar or the, you know, the fucking Osterine, the RAD 140, the whatever. And for somebody like Candace, who exposed herself chronically to Trenbolone, like, like this is what could be expected potentially for somebody who is abusing this shit. Now, is Trenbolone the exact same as like Anivar? No, not necessarily. But again, all of these compounds at some level lose tissue selectivity and will be viralizing as fuck. Maybe you can get away with, you know, two and a half to five milligrams of Anivar, like relatively long term with relatively minor changes, if any noticeable at all. But most girls that are using Anivar are using like fucking 10 milligrams plus. Like that's like the baseline dose nowadays. Even in bikini chicks, it's fucking baffling, dude. Like that's way too much to be exposing yourself to for, you know, multiple months on end. Like that shit will have some changes that will be induced in the majority of individuals. And those might not be reversible. And they creep up fucking quick, dude. So definitely be careful of them. I um, thought this was a good catapult opportunity to talk about like I was, you know, Obviously, I took the time to read this article. You know, the headline popped out at me. I've had a few people send it to me and it's been on my tabs for a fucking while. Glad to finally close it out. Had bodybuilder gross penis on my tabs for a fucking minute. Um, and be able to educate about some more safer alternatives. Potentially avoid some other girls from growing dicks that they don't want to. Growing facial hair they don't want. Getting giant fucking crank jawlines that they don't want. So be smart, guys. And if you're a guy who is educating your girl, she probably doesn't need fucking gear. So keep that in mind. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that, learned something. Check out the SARMS Girl Returns video for some education on non-viralizing agents. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplace18s.com, follow me on Instagram, and moreplace18s, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, my TRT clinic. I'll telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, get high quality medical oversight from doctors who understand hormones and anabolics like this, regardless of your natural, enhanced, cranked out of your fucking tree, we're non-judgmental and we will be in your camp to help ensure highest quality of life slash health slash longevity um, possible. Work with you, not against you, not shit on you for trying to get a lipid profile or something basic. And we have very cost-effective labs and we actually know what to advise you order for those labs. You don't spend waste time and money ordering random fucking panels, anti-aging panels and shit from other clinics that will basically 
leave you on your own to figure it out. We actually advise what to get. We have the most cost-effective options for those diagnostics, and we will interpret them accordingly for you, help develop a plan that is individualized for you. And notably, a lot of guys on this channel probably are in a similar boat to me and have a um, menopausal mom. That is something that we deal with too. And most clinics, to be honest, can't even deal with basic fucking TRT for men in a good way that is following the most up-to-date literature and does not just involve a cookie cutter script of TRT, HCG, and estrogen. So again, for women, especially perimenopause, postmenopause, this shit is even more complicated and understanding even how to optimize, you know, natural women who are premenopause and like what kind of hormones make sense to be using and when, when progesterone makes sense, when exogenous estradiol makes sense, what kind of delivery methods are least inflammatory, this kind of shit we address and we actually understand the most up-to-date literature and I would highly recommend you really fucking dig into it. Like again, I always talk about having a high quality doctor in your camp for your own stuff, but even for your fucking mom, dude, like very, very important, the rate of neurodegenerative disease, heart disease goes through the fucking roof when estrogen and all the adjacent you know, steroidogenesis induced hormones that are produced in a functioning, you know, young female that crashed the fucking zero essentially post menopause sub, you know, except for adrenal steroid production, that kind of shit and understanding how to address it critical for ensuring high quality of life leading into older age, in my opinion. So check that out. If you want to get high quality medical oversight for yourself, for your family, your loved ones, your friends, whatever it is, we do it for men, women, um, and it is turnkey, you know, we do it all. So anyways, check it out as well as anything else I'm associated with all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.